I like video games. It's as simple as that. Anything from RPGs to horror to sandbox to rage games, I can get with. Some of the games I played are more popular, while others remain hidden and outside of the spotlight. In my opinion, this makes these hidden games more special since they don't have as much coverage and it's easier to appreciate the game on your own instead of having it shown and spoiled to you before you can even buy it. Such is the case with Nisess, a game that has been up on Steam for more than two years with less than 1,000 total reviews. I found this game while aimlessly scouring through the deeper parts of Steam in search of something new and fresh, and I'm happy to say, I think I found just what I'm looking for. Obviously, since I'm talking about a game not many people heard of, some explanation is required. This is a survival game, meaning you have to survive. Pretty straightforward, right? Well, yes, actually it's pretty simple when you get down to the basics. The game is very similar to games like Terraria, Don't Starve, or even Minecraft content-wise. The art style and gameplay feels heavily inspired from these games. The game loop consists of getting resources, crafting items, and then exploring for more resources. You can also do stuff like raids and creating colonies, but that's much more technical and can feel overwhelming if taught all at once. The bosses are also a big part of this game, just like any other survival game. In this case, the bosses are specific to different biomes and require different conditions to be met to summon them. Okay, I don't want to get ahead of myself, so it'd probably be better to go through how I played some of the game just to get a better understanding of how everything works. Also, big spoiler warning, I want to mention this because I seriously recommend you at least try the game before ruining it for yourself, as it is so much fun to go in blind and experience all the interesting mechanics and gameplay elements firsthand, rather than having it be shown to you. That's how I feel about video games in general, as once you know more and more stuff, it becomes less of an exploration of a brand new world, and more of a repetitive slog to progress to beat the game. The game is only 10 bucks at the time of this recording, and if you like the aforementioned games like Terraria or Don't Starve or Minecraft, I seriously recommend you try it. It would also support the developer, because the whole game was made by one person. When you launch the game, you are greeted with a menu screen with a background consisting of a random scrolling image of one of the biomes slash islands you can find within the game. When you go to create a new game, it will prompt you with a character creation screen. It's pretty similar to Terraria in terms of customization as you can change all sorts of factors like hairstyle and the color of your skin and clothes. Then you type your character name and the world name into the two text spaces below. Then when you click next, it prompts you for the game rules. There's a lot of game options which allow for more variety when playing with five difficulty levels and many extra game rules like hunger and what you drop when you die you can fine-tune the game to suit a larger majority of players which is something i wasn't expecting since the game is still in early access when you load into the world the first thing you see is a forest your hotbar is at the bottom of the screen and there's an axe and a sword as well as a crafting guide in the first three slots there's a tutorial gui that pops up on screen and basically gives you instructions on how to approach the first few minutes of the game and get your bearings in this new world I personally never enjoy tutorials since I always want to feel the game for myself and not have my hand held through any part of the experience, so I just closed the tutorial and started playing. The first thing you think of doing is probably chopping the trees all around you. I did just that and soon enough had a nice pile of spruce and oak logs to use. Opening up the inventory, you are greeted to a crafting interface on the right side with the main inventory space on the bottom middle of the screen. The first thing you craft here is a workbench, since just like the other games I keep comparing this one to, you need to craft tools and armor to progress. After getting some wood and basic tools, I just wandered around the map for a bit, without knowing what to do next. Then I realized that night was fast approaching, so I decided to build a small shelter to protect myself against whatever spawned. After some time passed, I realized not much was going on, so I walked around and realized the zombies that spawn at night don't really aggro on you unless they see you. This actually goes for most enemies in the game, excluding the bosses, which I'll get to in a bit. After the night ended, I wandered back to the center of the island and interacted with the NPC who was there. He seemed like the guide NPC for this game with answers to questions you might have and a quest system. I also realized that the ladder he had in the small room that connected to the main room was actually an entrance to the cavern lair. This is the first major instance of this game doing something unique and different from games like Terraria or Minecraft or even Don't Starve. The map is broken up into three layers. The first one is the ground layer, where you have your trees, animals, and ocean that surrounds the island. The latter gives you access to the cavern layer, which is your general source of ores and other upgrades to help you progress. The third layer is the deep caverns, which is an even harder version of the caverns above it, but is also tied to the biome on the first layer. I didn't learn about the third layer until later on in the game, but that's fine. I ventured down with my wooden gear and a bunch of torches. 
Once down in the caverns, I lit up the winding pathways that were littered with jars and found some more enemies. Then I came across a bunch of cobwebs, which probably meant there were spiders. I tried going in deep, but after a couple close calls, I decided to tackle that area later. There were these buildings that were littered throughout the cavern that had chests with interesting items. This again seemed similar to Terraria and the underground houses with golden chests that had one guaranteed weapon slash utility item in them. I picked up a pair of whatever that is that allowed me to run faster for a short amount of time while holding space. Also I found a pitchfork above the ground which is pretty good at killing things. There are also some sort of vampire lair in the caverns that I cleared out with little to no issue. After a while, I was able to get a bunch of ores by mining them and blowing them up with bombs and TNT I found in the previously mentioned cavern chests. On a small side note, I want to address the music. I like it. It's very simple, but somehow thematically fits with the environment you are in. This creates more immersion which I respect. Also, again, I want to mention that the whole game, including the audio and spriting, was made by one guy, which is pretty crazy. After doing some more research, I actually realized that the music in the SES wasn't actually created by the game developer, it was actually free music that he found online, so that's just something that I wanted to clear up before anybody goes in the comments and tells me that I was wrong about it. Anyways, once I ran out of torches, I went back up and decided to see what one of the items I got did. It's called the Mysterious Portal, and the description implies it's probably a boss summon like in Terraria. I summoned the boss, which was called the Evil's Protector. It looked cool, but was pretty hard since it constantly spawned portals, which spawned small enemies, and also zombies from the surrounding areas kept aggroing and interrupting the fight. The first time I did the fight, I forgot to pick up my potions, so I was very underprepared and got killed pretty fast. On my second attempt though, I remembered to drink the potions, which helped improve my defense, regen, and damage, as well as other stats. This helped me tank the boss more, while being able to do more damage myself. One of the NPCs on the starting island even came in and shot the boss some, which helped a little. I was getting close to killing the boss, but he despawned as night ended, and I was left with no rewards. After the failed boss attempts, I decided to go and visit the other biome cavern layers because they are all different and have their own unique monsters and loot. The snow biome is the next cavern you should visit, because the ore you get there is mineable with the pickaxe you have before fighting the boss. The ore is called frost shards, and when it is in mined, it looks like an underground stone block with slivers of blue going through it. Once you get enough, you can craft armor and weapons that are better than gold, which is the best ore in the normal caverns. With this new gear, I was more prepared to fight the boss again, so I beat him, but forgot to record it, so I re-recorded myself beating the boss with other gear, but using the ice javelins which were dropped by enemies in the frost caverns. You can also find different summon weapons throughout the game, and I was able to find a snowman summon which allows you to summon snowmen that shoot at the enemies. They also do decent damage and act as an overall damage upgrade. After killing Evil's Protector, the game really opens up. The boss drops three items of interest, a foci, demonic bars, and a force of the wind. On the first kill, he also drops a demon heart, which increases your max HP. The force of the wind acts as a mobility item and allows you to dash when having it equipped and pressing space. The foci can be one of four for each class in the game. It provides a flat damage bonus to weapons of the correct class and a damage decrease to all weapons of the other classes. The demonic bars allow you to craft the demonic workstation which allows you to craft higher tier items. After the first boss was defeated, I was able to craft more demonic bars because you can turn copper, iron, and gold bars into demonic bars at different rates. This is such a good quality of life mechanic that makes the game less grindy and makes me respect the game even more. You also need void shards for some of the demonic items and these shards can be obtained from enemies in the dungeon. This dungeon can be located by using the dungeon map, which can be found inside the chest inside the guide's house. You can also craft the map with map fragments, which sometimes drop from normal enemies like zombies. Once you locate the coordinates of the dungeon, you can swim over there. The enemies in there aren't too scary, but you should definitely come prepared as it is possible to be overwhelmed and killed pretty easily. After I crafted the demonic tools and armor, I went back to the snow cavern because that's where the next boss is. While walking around there, I saw some big spider eggs and got one from a chest as well. This seemed to be the next boss summon, since it's found inside the biome that is explored after the normal caverns. For this boss, it's best to clear out a large area with explosives, so you have plenty of room for dodging attacks and being able to hit the boss back. I found TNT and bombs in the cavern layer before, and had some saved up, which allowed me to make a decent sized arena for the boss. The boss itself isn't too hard. This is especially true if you buffed up before the fight like I did. All I had to really worry about were the pools of acid the Spider Queen leaves on the floor, as they can cause unnecessary damage that can stack up quickly. A bow with fire arrows plus some minions would do nice damage and cause extra damage to be applied over time. In my opinion, this boss was easier than the first one, because it had similar HP but easier shot patterns and less things were going on on the screen at one time. 
The drops from the boss aren't too useful, but give more trinket and weapon variety, which is always nice to see. After this boss kill, I continued exploring and even ventured on the wiki a bit because I was getting stuck progression-wise, and that's when I realized about the third lower cavern layer to each cavern layer above it. The third layer has more loot but harder enemies and better ores. This made me realize how much content there actually is in this game, and I decided not to make a whole playthrough analysis partially because of this discovery. At this point, I've been playing for about 6 hours and have been enjoying every minute of it. The music, artwork, and gameplay come together very nicely and keep impressing me. I feel like I've given a small taste of what the game is like, but I also feel it's never truly possible to completely experience the game without actually playing it. With 10 bosses, multiple unique biomes, and a bunch of extra mechanics like city building, it feels kind of unfair to explain and show it all in one video. This is why, again, I highly recommend you at least wishlist the game and get it when it's on sale, since it's such a good investment for only $10. I can definitely rank it up there with games like Terraria, Minecraft, and Don't Starve, which is really surprising since on a surface level this game looks extremely simple. Nonetheless, this game managed to stand out and prove to me its potential. The fact that it's still in early access only gives me more confidence that new content will be added and that the game will be improved upon even more. If you found any of the stuff in this video interesting, I recommend you at least check out the game's Steam page. I'll leave links to it in the description as well as a link to the game's own website. Thank you for watching.